Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. For a tragically brief time in the 1920s, Rudolf Valentino romanced the world. The Latin lover was one of the biggest stars on the silver screen, and when his life was cut brutally short at the height of his fame, the fallout was legendary. But behind his sad, soulful eyes lurked secrets that were even darker than his infamous end. Did Rudolf Valentino die because of a cursed ring? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Rudolf Valentino, Hollywood's first heartthrob. Great lover of the 1920s, Rudolf Valentino. With the Roaring Twenties in full swing and the first talkies on the horizon, Hollywood's booming film industry already had its share of bankable stars. Charlie Chaplin, Greta Garbo, Douglas Fairbanks, Buster Keaton. But in the summer of 1926, an Italian immigrant named Rodolfo Valentino would join them. Known as the Latin lover, Rudolf Valentino would, by summer's end, single-handedly change the way generations of men and women thought about seduction. It's sad Valentino never lived to see that autumn, and it's sadder that he spent his final weeks engaged in an indecorous feud with an anonymous editorialist who had questioned his masculinity and blamed him for America's degeneration into effeminacy. Rudolf Valentino is an icon of early Hollywood. The Latin lover was a sex symbol during film's silent era. The Italian actor became one of the great stars of silent film, a Hollywood symbol who frequently struggled against his own Latin lover image. Valentino was one of the first actors whose image became a sensation in pop culture, and also one of the first Hollywood stars to successfully demand for better pay and creative control over his projects. Rudolf Valentino was a star from the early years of Hollywood, but his elegant, randy years in New York City should not be forgotten. The future heartthrob was born May 6, 1895 in Italy. He arrived at Ellis Island in 1913 at the age of 18. He was a poor student as a child, in part because he was so handsome a child that his teachers and his mother frequently overindulged him. He graduated from agricultural school but struggled to find work. Arriving in New York by boat from Italy, Rudolf Valentino worked as a taxi dancer at Maxim's Restaurant Cabaret, where rich women could pay for all sorts of pleasures with exotic men, also known as Tango Pirates. He eventually moved on, repairing his reputation on the ballroom circuit, but then served as a witness in a highly public divorce, provoked a probably retributive arrest for vice, and had his newly respectable name sullied. Valentino quickly befriended a Chilean heiress, which might have seemed like a good idea, but she was unhappily married to a well-connected businessman named John de Sauls. It is unknown if Valentino and Blanca had a romantic relationship, but when she finally divorced her husband, Valentino defended her in her child custody suit. Valentino testified that he had evidence that John de Sauls had been having multiple affairs, including one with a dance partner of Valentino's. Blanca's ex-husband John used political connections to get Valentino arrested on flimsy, unspecified vice charges. The scandal meant that Valentino had a difficult time finding work. When Blanca shot her ex-husband to death, Valentino fled to Los Angeles, fearing being brought in on another sensational trial. Valentino joined a national touring production, but it folded in Utah. The young performer then made his way to San Francisco, where he resumed his dancing career. He fled to Hollywood and started over. In 1919, Valentino married actress Jean Acker, but their union was never consummated. According to several accounts, Acker locked Valentino out of their hotel room on their wedding night. Prior to the marriage, Acker had been in a romantic relationship with a woman. In Los Angeles, Valentino continued with his dancing, teaching dance to a wealthy, older clientele. He began to pursue acting jobs, but was mostly cast in small, villainous roles due to his exotic looks. Eventually, screenwriter June Mathis 
decided he would be perfect as the lead in her film, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Released in 1921, The Four Horsemen was a huge success, one of the first films to ever make one million dollars. Unfortunately, the studio refused to accept Valentino as a star. They refused to give him a raise or more leading men roles. Valentino's reputation as a Lothario was probably enhanced with his arrest for bigamy in 1922. Divorced from Acker in 1921, he failed to wait a full year before remarrying. He was taken into custody and forced to pay a fine after his 1922 wedding to actress and set designer Natasha Rambova in Mexico. The pair remarried the following year. Valentino published a collection of poetry entitled Daydreams around this time, a work which reflected the couple's interest in spiritualism. Rambova took a dominant role in managing her husband's career, much to Valentino's detriment. Despite his persona as a suave ladies' man and a Latin lover, Valentino claimed his love life was tragic. As he once confessed to a journalist, the women I love don't love me, the others don't matter. According to the heart-wrenched Valentino, he was always unhappy in love. Despite praise for Valentino in reviews and the glowing coverage of him in fan magazines, Metro Pictures did not seek to fully capitalise on Valentino's growing stardom and did not raise his $350 a week salary. Other box office stars at that time were earning weekly salaries that exceeded 10 times that amount. Instead, Metro underutilised Valentino in his next three films despite his increasing stardom. Believing that Metro would not use him to his full potential, Valentino quit and signed with famous players Lasky, which would later become Paramount Pictures, for a weekly salary nearly triple what Metro had been paying him. Almost immediately, famous players Lasky cast him in the title role of The Sheik, released in October 1921. There he got the respect he was looking for, the role that defined his career. It was around this time that Valentino made a trip to San Francisco. He bought a ring at a jewellery store, despite warnings from the owner that the ring was cursed. He wore the ring while shooting his next film, The Young Rajah, which turned out to be the only flop of his career. The film was lost until 2005 and even then only fragments remain. It was two years before he would make another movie. Valentino put the ring away and didn't wear it again until he went to New York following the filming of Son of the Shake. The mania around Valentino grew so rapidly that some women reportedly fainted when they saw him in the film. The following year Valentino had another stellar success with Blood and Sand. As Valentino's popularity grew, his style choices began to directly influence the public. Men wanted to emulate his slick back hairstyle and bought hair products in droves. Colourful clothing became increasingly popular. In one dramatic situation, Valentino briefly grew a beard for a film and the degree of public outcry was overwhelming. By 1926, Valentino had reached the pinnacle of his career. He was undoubtedly one of the world's most famous men. Valentino was still frustrated with his salary. He was earning $1,250 a week and had been offered a raise to $3,000, but that was still less than other major stars of the era were getting. Mary Pickford made $10,000 a week. Valentino announced that he would go on strike against famous players. In September 1922, the studio filed a lawsuit against him, but Valentino refused to back down. Famous Players was a bit desperate at that particular moment. Their other big star, comedian Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, was caught up in his own scandal at the moment, having been charged with rape and manslaughter. He would eventually be acquitted, and Famous Players had had to shelve several of Arbuckle's movies during the furore. They offered to raise Valentino's salary to $7,000 a week. That offer unfortunately leaked to the press, which reported it as a new contract before the deal had been finalised. Valentino was furious and began looking for work elsewhere. The studio held firm, exercising its option to extend Valentino's contract, preventing him from accepting acting jobs from any other studio. While he was still a popular drawer at the box office, 
Valentino struggled the public and media perceptions of him. He challenged one newspaper writer to a fight after he was criticised in an editorial called Pink Powder Puffs. In response to the piece, Valentino wrote, You slur my Italian ancestry. You ridicule upon my Italian name. You cast doubt upon my manhood. Valentino also suffered from commonly held prejudices about immigrants, having been denied roles for being too foreign. A few weeks after the premiere of Son of the Sheikh, allegedly while wearing the ring, Valentino collapsed at the Hotel Ambassador in New York. Initially diagnosed with appendicitis, it was discovered that he had perforated ulcers, mimicking appendicitis, a condition now called Valentino syndrome. After having the surgery, Valentino developed infections and complications, in particular a fatal case of pleurisy in his left lung. In a horrific move, the doctors chose not to tell Valentino about his prognosis, letting him believe he'd make it. His doctors lied to him. Sadly, this only made the Sheikh's final moments all the more heartbreaking. He soon developed peritonitis, an infection of abdominal tissues. Even though Valentino seemed to be recovering well, he later lapsed into a coma and died eight days later from an infection, though it was rumoured to be from arsenic poisoning. His condition worsened and he died August 23, 1926, at the age of 31. His last words were, Don't worry, Chief, I will be all right. His funeral was a public spectacle attended by fans and Hollywood stars alike. Even after the initial rush publicity surrounding his death subsided, he would be in the news for many more years to come. Despite earning nearly $2 million over his short career, he spent money freely and lavishly, to the extent that an observer claimed he didn't know the real value of money. His family and his manager battled over his estate for nearly six years before a settlement was reached. His death caused mass hysteria among fans. An estimated 100,000 people crowded the streets outside the funeral home where he lay in state. A riot erupted when frenzied fans tried to break in to grab a last glimpse at the screen icon. Two women attempted suicide in front of the hospital, and a woman in London, as well as a man in Paris, were successful in killing themselves while clutching photos of the late actor. After a funeral mass in New York, Valentino was transported back to Hollywood, where he was laid to rest in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. A woman in black mourns at Valentino's crypt every year, usually on the anniversary of his death, and leaves a single red rose. This began right after his death, and it was later revealed to be a publicity stunt. However, the stunt stuck, and over the years dozens of women in black have arrived to deliver a rose to Valentino's crypt. Rudolph Valentino was truly a multifaceted character. He experienced poverty and plenty, obscurity and fame, and love and loss. His dedication to his own personal style was remarkable, though it could fairly be considered excessive and all-consuming. One wonders if his early death could be considered merciful, in light of his dangerous financial habits, lifelong debts, diva behaviour, and the eventual demise of the silent film industry. His reputation as the silent screen's great lover haunted him after death. Some people claimed that he had been poisoned or shot by a jealous husband. Valentino was given a grand send-off. For three days, thousands crowded a funeral home to view his body and say goodbye to the romantic idol. Actresses Mary Pickford and Gloria Swanson were among the mourners. Perhaps not a great actor, Valentino had a magical and elusive quality that made him a legend. He possessed a tremendous charisma that shined through his appearances on the big screen, and his early death has only fueled his status as a revered pop icon. Valentino's image has remained iconic in Hollywood history, and his Latin lover image lived on with actors who took on similar roles. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Rudolf Valentino? 
Though ridiculed for his appearance throughout his career and criticised for his stance on compensation and creative control, Valentino established a path that many Hollywood stars would follow.